going on, guys? What's up, everybody? Paul, Justin, Fadi. You know what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Gypsy fam? It's Justin, Paul, Fadi, Kenneth. Today, since it's getting colder out, it's fall. Winter is just around the corner. We're gonna talk about layering. And the most essential layering piece is outerwear. Outerwear, jackets, hoodies. Yeah, you name it. Anything that's just on the, the outside, right? Yeah. And yeah, our favorite, our favorite. We've been really yeah. waiting for this. So, yeah, it's finally getting a little bit chilly. Time to throw on the puffer. Time to throw on the windbreaker. Do the, do the wool jacket? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys get it. Um, outerwear is like some of our favorite parts of, you know, dressing up. Dress so. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna go over some of our favorite pieces and then we're gonna go over some affordable alternatives to those pieces. And we're just gonna showcase some of our, you know, ready to go outfits. Yeah, let's get right into it. guys so I'm gonna start it off uh, one of the pieces that I like in my core wardrobe is wardrobe that sounded weird but <laughs> one of the pieces I like in my core wardrobe is a cropped sweater or a cropped hoodie something cropped I just like this for the fall time because it's not super cold yet where I need like a full-on jacket but it's not hot enough to just be out in a t-shirt you know and this is one of my favorite pieces this is a Sanjeev's uh, cropped sweater it's reversible super nice fit very cropped, like if you lift up your arms and you're not wearing a shirt underneath, you are gonna show some skin, some <laughs> belly button action. Uh, I do like crop pieces in my wardrobe because I have a longer torso, so it makes it, see, make it seem like my legs are longer and my torso is shorter. Um, gives a really nice aesthetic from the front, the sides, and the back. And yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite fall essentials. Some good alternatives to this sweater because this sweater is sold out. I'm sure Sanjeev's gonna drop more colorways in the future, but Ramia is dropping his Manhattan cropped knit and a cropped uh, hoodie as well. So check that out. Also, our friend Winter Austin is dropping her buy hostage hoodie. But if you want, you can go also go to like Easy Gap, buy one of those cropped hoodies, or you can go to Uniqlo, or you can just buy your own sweater that's regular and just cut the bottom or have a tailor just you know, sew a new bottom on there for you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. All right, so uh, my first core sort of essential in my wardrobe that I like best around the fall winter is denim jackets. I love the versatility of denim jackets. Uh, I think the way mine fits specifically works great with my wardrobe because it's a little bit more cropped. Uh, it's not too thick, so it looks good under like parkas, for example. I think denim jackets look really good in Americana outfits, which I'm getting into underneath the parka. I think they look great on their own when it's not as cold outside and you just want to toss it over a t-shirt. Um, denim jackets are just great, super versatile. This is um, a capital V2 Boro jacket. This is my favorite denim jacket that I own. That's why I brought it. But any denim jacket works, guys. Any denim jacket from anywhere, whether it be Levi's or Uniqlo or Michael's or Goodwill, it doesn't matter. Um, denim jackets are just some of the most classic pieces of outerwear, in my opinion, and I think some of the most versatile. Yeah, going off the versatile, that's definitely a huge factor, right? Because you see any sort of style, even like a Rick Owens type of style, mm -hmm. there's denim jackets. Yeah. Americana, yeah. like you said earlier, yeah. denim jackets. Yeah. Balenciaga denim jackets, but like anywhere from like. Any. <laughs> denim jackets are one of those things that like every designer makes, from low, the lowest of the low, like Gap, no offense, Gap, to like the highest of the high, like. I mean, shoot, Balenciaga. Balenciaga, Louis Vuitton, I mean, fashion houses all the way to like fast fashion. Denim jackets are everywhere. Doesn't have to be this one. This is just my favorite, like I said. Go get you a denim jacket if you want one. <laughs> so, uh, first piece that I want to introduce, right, is a leather jacket, right? And now this is not anything special. It's not anything high designer. This is actually just vintage Banana Republic, right? But the reason why I like it so much is because um, I just like the way it fits and the way it cut. But originally, it didn't fit that really nice. Like, I paid maybe $100 for this jacket, right? But I took it to a tailor, and I put another $100 in, right? So I could make it fit according to my body, right? 
And something that I recommend, especially for the cheaper alternatives, is going to a tailor because you can make anything fit into like your proportions, right? And because sometimes if you want those like higher end designer proportions or things like that, right? Like, oh, it's cropped or like the sleeves are longer or things like that, right? You're paying like a thousand dollars, right? Because um, you know you're paying for a, a non like normal cut. But if you could just go to Taylor and I spent maybe two hundred dollars on this jacket, and it's one of my favorites because um, it's so simple and it's so versatile, right? And it fits any of the styles that I want to dress in. Sometimes when I dress grungy, of course, like I love the jacket fits. But sometimes if it's like a, a date night type of shit or like. Um, a regular ass like yeah. jacket. They're pretty dressy. Just dressing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, just dressing up, right? It's yeah. just a, a flat leather jacket, right? And I recommend these ones specifically over like, you know, a biker jacket, right? Because I think that's a little too loud sometimes, right? But what some, do you mean by these ones? These ones, so specifically the ones that are just with a collar and a zipper. Mm. And so it's just very simple, right? Like zipper just straight down the middle. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Versus like a biker jacket which is crossover and it's like has all these like yeah. hardware and it's really loud, right? And you know, it's really intimidating for a lot of people. Um, but something like this, right, is something that I really, really recommend. And you can go get these from anywhere. Like leather jackets are literally anywhere. You can go to Goodwill and find a random ass leather jacket, or you could spend like three thousand dollars on like yeah. some like exotic leather or something like that, right? So leather jackets, right? Um, it doesn't really matter how you get them, but what I would recommend is take them to a tailor if you can, if it doesn't fit you the right way, and try to make it fit your body, right? Because leather is, is such a peculiar you know, type of material that it doesn't always work out for everybody. All right, uh, for my piece, uh, I just picked the flannel just because uh, it's simple. You can find them anywhere, like cheap, you know, like this, this flannel is literally just Uniqlo. And uh, well, actually I got this from Paul, he just gave it to me. And uh, I really like it. I've only had it for like two weeks and I've been wearing it like every day. And uh, like I said, the best part about flannels is you can find them anywhere, like H&M, Forever 21, Goodwill. You know, you can find it for like 20 bucks, you know, Uniqlo, I don't know, it's probably like the same thing, what, 20 bucks? Like, it doesn't have to be expensive, you know, so it's simple, it goes with everything. Um, I mean, that's really it, it's just, just flannel, honestly. A lot of people, um, I mean, I guess most people, when they style flannels, they see them as like really, really thin jackets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, they just have like a nice pop-out collar. The sleeves are usually a little bit bigger than like a button-up shirt. They're maybe a little bit longer, boxier. Flannels are just really light jackets. If you think about it, like, in that sense, they're super, super versatile. Yeah, especially for fall when mm -hmm. it's just like early fall mm -hmm. and it's still a little bit nice out, but mm -hmm. it's starting to get a little bit colder. Mm -hmm. Flannel's a great piece for during the day. Mm -hmm. Nighttime, maybe bring a hoodie with you, yeah. throw it on, yeah. or a jacket. Everybody but, here has like a million outfits posted with just like a t shirt and a flannel. That's like yeah. the go to, like spring slash early fall go to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Paul Plus you can flannel. mess them Justin up too. Justin in the flannel, Kenneth in the flannel, <laughs> Fadi in the flannel, boom, you know? Yeah. Just, yeah. Kevin Newman's everywhere too. Yeah. If you get the red flannel. Mm. The one flannel to avoid is the checkered red and black flannel. That is a... <laughs> <laughs> unless, you, unless you go for that, that aesthetic, bro. Honestly, I mean, no shade to anybody who just defaults to like the blue jeans, white tee, and the red and black flannel. But there's a lot of cool flannels out there. I mean, yeah. we'll, like, like we showed you uh, earlier, there's, a, there's different ones that we own. That's his opinion. I'm a hate on it. Like that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> it's a Kevin to win ass fit, but you know what I'm saying? Because I used to be that, bro. And that was oh, we got a picture. We got a picture, <laughs> we got a picture of Kenneth yeah. right here in his uh, Kevin Nguyen fit. I, mean, I, I probably like have pictures somewhere. I was like 16, bro. That yeah. was it. That was it. When it was. It was, it was though. When you're 16 years old, everybody you looked up to. Everybody on YouTube fit. was wearing the red flannel, checkered. I don't know where it adapted into like an ABB thing to a Kevin Nguyen core, but. It's, it just uh, had, <laughs> it I mean, just spread so that is like honestly, that spread faster than the coronavirus, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. Everybody was rocking the red flannel in 2015, 14, 13. 14, yeah. 13, yeah. Um, I mean to be honest, like most people don't like deep dive fashion like that. They're just like going to Google or YouTube and be like how to dress better. And then it's like, get a checkered flannel, get some blowout knee skinny jeans, get some Chelsea boots. It's like, it's part of the starter package. Everybody starts there, obviously. Um, you don't need to stay there, some people do. I'm not trying to hate this motherfucker, trying to hate for some, something fierce, I'm but uh, flannels are great though. Don't let that specific look like scare you away from flannels. Yeah. There's a lot of cool ones out there. Needles, yeah. for instance. Needles flannels are dope. They're not too expensive anymore. Uh, that's not like 300. You no, can find, the, the thing, that's the thing, right? You can find needles flannels on Grail for like, 
200 bucks. But there's so many alternatives to the needles flannel, like even Urban Outfitters sells like, you know, like cut-up uh, Yeah, flannel. everybody like, makes like, one Everybody those, sells yeah. that now. Sure. Just get like a not regular, regular looking flannel. Throw it over like a nice t-shirt and some, I don't know, your favorite pants. Dress Call up, dress down. Yeah. Flannels are great. Burst top. Flannels, man. A1. Later. Moving on to the next article of clothing. I'm gonna go with a nylon jacket. The reason I, I like nylon jackets so much is most of them are waterproof, right? Most of them are made by like Arteryx or Patagonia, North Face, um, Post Archive Faction, but water just normally beads off, which is really nice for Seattle weather in the fall because it's gonna start raining here in the next week or so. So you definitely wanna have something that is like, you know, waterproof, that's comfortable and light because it's not necessarily freezing cold yet, but the rain will hit you. Yeah, most of these things not only keep the water out, they also keep the wind out. Mm -hmm. So honestly, a pretty good like middle of the fall, middle of the fall kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, for my piece, uh, I chose this post archive faction jacket. Shout out to Paul and my friend Long. They got me this for Your birthday. My right? birthday. Yeah. That's my birthday, right? Yeah. yeah. We birthday. buy each other presents for so many different reasons. Yeah. Like, of course, <laughs> the, yeah. Sometimes we just buy stuff, each other stuff for no reason. It's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, uh, the cut is really cool. It fits really nice. You can cinch the bottom to make it look like more cropped, or you can wear it loose. You can zip it up. It's very asymmetric. It's also Close dirty. Archive fashion. Yeah, it's also a little dirty, you know. <laughs> a little stain from eating some food earlier. Um, but yeah, Post Archive Faction, I think, is one of those brands that just have really crazy cuts. Um, like, they're really unique in a sense that I don't, I've never seen these designs before of them. And they're also based out of Korea, which is cool. Uh, more affordable alternatives to Post Archive Faction. Okay, it's probably so, honestly be like Arteryx. Listen, listen. You know so Post Archive Faction specifically is like the top of the top for like weird cut, yeah. gorpy, sort of like dark, broody shell jackets, right? But like, mm. dude, just get a black shell jacket anywhere. Get a yeah. black shell jacket at REI. Just walk into your local REI and be like, hmm, what do you have on sale? It all works. It all works. You just put on a black shell jacket, some black jeans, whatever. Right? Oh, and you know like, when our terrorist people are like, oh, the water beats off, and like, oh, these, these little brands don't beat off. You could just buy a spray. <laughs> no, literally, like, yeah, like you know, right. Arteryx, right? So, like, they're, they're pre sprayed, and then, like, if you wash it a few times or wear it a few times, you're supposed to reapply that spray. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, that spray applies to any nylon. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you could just, like, if you want that, like, oh, the water doesn't beat off, it's a spray, right? right? I don't remember what it's called, but you can look it up, right? You can get it on Amazon for like 20 bucks. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's like, not, yeah. The, the water beating off isn't a, like a proprietary thing Arteryx yeah. does. Every shell jacket could beat water off. Yeah. You just have to clog the pores with the spray. Yeah. That's Every exactly jacket right. has pores. You just gotta clog the pores. Easy as that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, definitely versatile. You can wear it when it's raining. You can wear it when it's windy. You can wear it when you just wanna dress up, you know? Like, just look. Shell jackets, I think, are just, they provide like a very clean look. You know yeah. what I mean? No matter what, you're wearing a shell jacket up top, the top of your body just looks like sleek. Like, put together, you can zip it up for like that, that cool sort of like ninja look, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And nylon jackets, they always have a cool way of like bundling up in the right places, you know? Like, yeah. I guess specifically right mine, mine's cropped. Mine's really cropped, this old Patagonia, but um, it's got longer sleeves. I love the way this one fits. And then his, you could kind of do the same thing mm -hmm. by just cinching the bottom and tucking it in a little bit. All shell jackets could do that. All shell jackets have a cinch at the bottom. You just tighten it, tuck it in, you know? Shell jackets. Definitely perfect. a necessity mm -hmm. for the fall. Mm -hmm. Uh, next piece up for me is military jackets. This one specifically is a Visboom ICT Ashes jacket, but honestly, it's just a military jacket with some patches on it. And you can get a military jacket once again, just about anywhere. Most commonly at like a mil surf store, mil yeah. military surplus store, uh, Goodwill. There's a lot of you know, sort of abandoned military clothes at Goodwills and stuff. Most thrift stores, stores. Yeah, most thrift stores. But military jackets are super, super versatile to me because they're just a little bit, typically, a little bit thicker than a flannel that serve the same purpose, right? Like I don't wanna wear anything waterproof that makes a ton of noise, but I want like a medium weight outer layer, something with a nice collar, something a little bit longer. Typically these aren't very cropped or anything. Uh, just a very regular fitting, nice jacket, you know? And it does the job. Military jackets are some of my favorite because they're always in like super uh, earth-tony colors, right? Like green, brown, black, 
I mean, you're supposed to blend in with yeah, yeah. You know, you're supposed the to, environment. Yeah, military, right? It yeah. serves a purpose typically, but uh, I also happen to love earth tones, especially right now, and especially during the fall. Uh, I just think olives look good, really good on me, personally. And uh, military jackets are always olive, so, yeah. It's a huge plus. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And they also come with cool cuts, too, because, I mean, they make, like, parkas. They have every kind of cut. Right, know? okay, yeah, so by military jacket, like, all-encompassing. Yeah, I, I don't want to just alienate to like this, you know. Yeah. Like, collar jacket. Yeah, parkas, anoraks. I mean, deck jackets. Deck jackets. Yeah, deck, deck jackets. jackets. We gotta actually, you know, we could talk about them too. Oh, we could get our deck jackets. Yeah, you know. oh. uh, this is where is it? So these would be like on the same level, I would say, right? So these are deck jackets. I think the right number, right name is N2 or N1 deck jackets, right? And so they're usually just straight cut, right? Zipper with the buttons and they're always lined with something, right? Because they're more of military's winter jackets, right? Um, however, these two are undercover ones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got, we got, however! We got, a, we, got, we got a little money over here, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. However, I spent my entire paycheck on this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> money I, team. I don't know about that. I get paid in a McDonald's direct deposit and EBT. Ew. So that's, um, that's something else. However, deck jackets, right? You don't have to get these exact ones. Like something like Paul's is easy to find. It's just a black one, right? Uh, mine is a specifically a camel one, right? Or meant to be designed as a camel one. And so these are also military jackets, right? And they don't fit any different from regular, a regular military yeah, yeah. jacket. Yeah, Undercover right? didn't do shit with this. Uh, the cuts are exactly the same. I think he grabbed military design cuts and kind of added his own flair to it. Uh, but deck jacket uh, or military jackets in general are very, very versatile in that type of sense, right? Yeah, there's thicker ones that are fur lined for colder months. There's thinner ones like this one for just sort of windier days. There's parkas for when it's raining and you want to just not get a single inch of your body wet. Yeah. Uh, anoraks for if you don't want to have a zipper and you just want like a hoodie type situation. Anoraks kind of do the same thing. Yeah. Um, military jackets are dope, guys. They're, they're great and you can find them for dirt, so yeah. So keywords, earth tones, mm. different kinds of fits, mm. and available anywhere. Anywhere. Literally anywhere. anywhere. So guys, go out, get yourself one. It could be $2,000 or it could be five bucks. You know? Literally five dollars. Literally five dollars. Yeah. Um, Might smell a little bad though. But yeah. <laughs> Just wash it, make sure it fits you nice, and yeah. All right guys, moving on to, it's like the fourth? Just fifth, fifth yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, item whatever, it is. Whatever. Uh, we're gonna go to one of the most trending uh, outerwear pieces, the work jacket. So we're gonna start off with this one. This is actually one of my newest pickups. I like it a lot. I got it at the Where did you go? flea market. Yeah, shout out to the boy Matt for this one. It's just a Detroit vintage. Very worn in. The distressing is perfect in my opinion. Um, you can find these just about anywhere. Any thrift store, any archive page really. Any. <laughs> it doesn't matter yeah. where you look anymore, whether it's like Etsy or eBay or Grailed or like any thrift store in person. You always be able to find a Carhartt. People love Carhartt right now, but for yeah. good reason. Yeah. yeah, for good reason. And you can always get like other workwear brands like Dickies or, you know. Red Cap. Red, Red Cap. Red Cap's like a real construction company type brand. Yeah. Like a good alternative to Dickies and Carhartt. Red Cap's good. Yeah, I love this jacket because it's has a crop to it. It just has the perfect distressing in my opinion. And the back logo is also pretty cool. Oh yeah, this is custom, by the way. This is the, no, yeah. yeah, this Carhartt's is from uh, Construction Associates Inc. Hey, shout out Construction Associates. Shout out to y'all. Y'all yeah. put in the work. Now I'm just wearing it. <laughs> and then another realm of work jackets. This is my common wear jacket. This is the Crescent jacket, I believe. Um, but yeah, there's just two different ends of the spectrum. This jacket's a lot more expensive than this one. But you can also find cheaper alternatives to this style work jacket as well. You can get like the Diggies Eisenhower. Yeah, I guess literally. the Carhartt, you know, that's like a lot thicker. It's blanket lined. Yeah. They're always sort of destroyed and distressed. But like something like this, the Commonware, Giz's jacket. Shout out Giz, by the way. Um, the super clean black single zip long sleeve jacket. That has an interesting cut. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are making those yeah. right now. Um, if, if we can find some more alternatives, we'll pop them all up here. I'm sure a couple of our friends make them too. Oh, my Banana Republic one is a work jacket. Yes, there. actually, uh, he brought that, so let's pull that up too. Um, even companies back in the day, like Banana Republic, everyone's always been making these. Yeah. It was a jacket I was wearing earlier, right? But um, same thing, same cut, right? Single zipper, straight down, right? 
Yeah. Um, however, this one is a uh, same thing, Taylor, right? Highly recommend. This is an XL and it fit me like shit when I first got it, but the width was fine. And I cut the length, right? Paid a little extra money. And now it's one of my favorite jackets, right? Yeah. This exact jacket is actually based off of, um, or well, this is what Balenciaga based off their work jacket, right? Their, what is, what's the one that you have? Bottega. Bottega. Bottega, yeah. Bottega. Bottega. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's a perfect uh, representation of like alternatives. Like, this is just a Banana Republic jacket that yeah. he got tailored. You know, he spent maybe 50 to 100 bucks tailoring this. Something like that, right? right? This one from, from the 90s, right? And just, when he wears this, the it fit honestly is... fits just as good <laughs> yeah. as like Justin's Bottega or like the, the, the Kama wear. Um, jackets, work jackets specifically, just like the denim jackets we were talking about earlier, very high and low. It's a whole spectrum and like everybody makes them and even if you uh, buy one at the low, you can tailor it and make mm -hmm. it look like the high. Does that make sense to you guys? You could always alter the cuts and you know. Because people pay top dollar for the cuts and yeah. once you get the cuts, the measurements are posted on their websites. Yeah. Like you go to Essence, you go anywhere, you'll find the measurements for the jackets. You just find the jacket that fits you, like, you know, shoulder wise and you can get the length cut to whatever you want. Yeah. That's exactly what I did here, right? I knew, I think this width is like 25, right? And I was like, that's perfect for width. But I think the length was like 29. And I was like, that's too long. Mm -hmm. But I made it to like about 25, 26, right? Because I wanted it just a little longer past my waist because mm -hmm. I didn't want it exactly cropped, Yeah. right? But now this fits perfect in my opinion, right? It's good material, right? And don't sleep on Vintage Banana Republic. Like, I, I highly recommend like any Vintage Banana Republic. Banana Republic right now is kind of ass. But uh, back then, like they used to like really care. Like this is really good leather. This is really good wool, right? It's lined and everything like that, right? So don't sleep on like getting something that like you might think fits, and it's going to tailor to adjust it to make it. Just make sure that you know it fits. Goldman ratio typically. Find your pit to pit, and if you want it to look cropped or boxy, one inch above pit to pit. So me and my pit to pit's 23, 24 typically. If I want a jacket to fit nice, and so my length I get 25, 26. Have fun with it too. I mean, the great thing about buying a old vintage piece is most of them are cheap. You know, you can find jackets like this for 20 bucks or upwards of like 80 to 100, right? And just make it your own. So it's like, even if you messed up the jacket and you don't like it, it's like 100 bucks. Yeah, you, didn't, you didn't buy a $2,000 Bottega jacket and, you know, cut it up, you know? You bought this jacket, you want to test it out, it worked or it didn't work. But at least you tried it. And once you find that perfect measurement for you, you do it to all your jackets. Just go to the same tailor even. Just be like, hey, what you did to me last week for that jacket, do it again. Four more jackets, boom. And finally, one of the last jackets we'll talk about here are puffer jackets, right? Puffer jackets are classic. Uh, you need them when they're cold, right? Specifically, the only one that I think is valid is the North Face one, right? You know, you know, say, shout out South Seattle, right? Shout out New York, you know what I'm saying, wherever. You feel me? This right here, bro, you see this, bro? This logo right here? That's, bro, look, bro. This logo right here, bro, <laughs> that's, that's valid. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, no, it's not like that. Like, you see this, bro? Prada, like, swag. <laughs> <laughs> Beach puffer, bro. You know what I'm saying, bro? Classic, right? Every colorway, valid, bro. Blue, red, yeah, white, bro. the Korea one, hard, right? Black, classic. You can't go wrong with it, but there is cheap alternatives, right? Cause, uh, <laughs> Yo, this is mad expensive. Yo, it's like $300, right? Or you can get a um, a booster and get it for like 100. But everybody in the hood, <laughs> everybody in the hood got one of these. Everybody in the suburb got one of these. It is a staple piece. The yeah. puffiness is cool. But like you could go to Uniqlo, uh, you can get a vintage one, you can go wherever. Like every company makes puffer jackets, right? It's not an expensive piece. It's a it's a staple in just any winter wardrobe, right? But the one that looks best is the North Face one, right? That's like um, okay. That's it. Like that's it. There's nothing else. The North Face one does fit real nice. Has a good shape to it. Puffiness is good. Keeps you warm. It's versatile. He's not wrong. You can do a lot of things with this. You can listen. You can rob a bank. I have a visceral, he knows this, I got a visceral, <laughs> violent hate for the North Face puffer jackets, all right? I really, really do. And um, honestly, I think I just grew up seeing too many of them and it made me sick. <laughs> Wait, see this, bro? That's nice. Bro, stop it. That's nice. This is for the YouTube. Bro. Vulture, look at that. Stop, bro. Big, He's a man of culture. Big logos. He's a man of culture. Big logos, you know what I'm saying? It's hard, bro. It's hard. Bro. So we went over obviously a lot of different kinds of jackets and uh, some of our favorites are 
super expensive, but hopefully we provided enough alternatives for you guys just to try out different styles that you saw today. Uh, yeah, I mean leather jackets, wool jackets, Work jackets, work jackets, nylon, nylon jackets, jackets, puffers, denim, military. Military is a big one. Try them out. You and know? Uh, sweaters too. Try out crop sweaters. Try out um, oversized sweaters. Try tight sweaters. Whatever looks good on you. Whatever makes you feel good. Just try it out. But yeah, this is just our advice. Yeah. yeah. You don't gotta listen. Check out all the jackets we brought today, y'all. Look what we. This is the movie magic right here. Look, this, look, look at this. Look, this, this. You know, look at, all, look at all this. Look at all these jackets. This is what we're working with today. What's going on? They're wearing every jacket. I feel like you can make Paul like fit everything. Once he's skinny, he's here, so just layer everything. Layers! Yeah. <laughs> this is a horrible bit. This is a horrible bit. Yeah. You can wear all jackets at once if you want. I hate when core jacket's suffering. <laughs> Barely <laughs> on. I got a puffer jacket on it. <laughs> Make sure um, if you single and you cute, DM my boy Kenneth. He needs you. He wants you. No, he don't really need you, but actually he don't really want you either. So don't even bother. Um, make sure you like, comment, Subscribe, hit the bell notification. We'll see you guys next week. Um, yeah, we out.